How's it going guys? So as you guys know, um, I'm really, really getting into salt water just lately. It's, it's, I basically live and breathe it at the moment. I am, I've got my head in every salt water forum I can find. I'm reading everything that I can read about it. I'm learning so, so much. I'm on the, um, the Aaron's Aquarium Facebook page, talking to a load of guys on there, learning from them and everything else. And it's just, it's great. Um, I'm always banging on about it to the point where one of my friends has got interested in salt water and has decided to set up his own salt water tank. Now he's been asking me loads of questions on how does he do this and how does he do that. So we've decided to make a video um, of all of his questions and me answering them. And this video should hopefully help you guys out there um, because you have probably thought of these questions as well. So we're gonna, we're gonna do loads and loads of videos like this because Mike has got loads and loads of questions. So what we'll do, we'll make a start. We'll go over to Mike from Mass Aquariums now and uh, he'll start us off asking the questions and hopefully guys, you'll like this video and uh, we'll carry on making them. What's up YouTube? Mike from Mass here, Mass Aquariums. I got loads of questions. Just like you guys, if anyone out there, like me, wants to start salt water, I know one person that can help me. And that's Mike from Aaron's Aquariums. So I've got a bunch of questions that's gonna help me and I hope it can help you. My first question, I've got nice sand in this tank. Can I keep this sand for a salt water or do I have to scrape it all out and get live sand? How's it going Mike? No, you can keep that sand in your tank, it's perfectly fine. You can use anything that you want to use for substrate. You don't have to go with live sand. Now this is a, a misconception that I've heard quite a lot and it catches a lot of uh, beginners out because there's still quite um, old school people that say you've got to use live rock and you've got to use live sand. It's not the case um, and you don't have to use live sand if you don't want to. You don't have to use crushed coral if you don't want to. Like you said, you've got sand there for an African cichlid tank, you can keep that. You can do a bare bottom um, tank if you want to do a bare bottom. Me personally, in my tank, I've gone for black gravel. It's just standard aquarium gravel. Um, it doesn't affect the pH of the tank in any way. It's, it's inert, um, but I like the color of it, so I went with black. Answer to the question is, yep, you can keep the sand, not a problem. Another question I have is, can or does my freshwater beneficial bacteria, will that hold true in a saltwater tank? Are the beneficial bacteria different? No, Mike, unfortunately, the beneficial bacteria that you've got currently living in your freshwater tank won't survive in a saltwater tank. So um, you will have to colonize a new lot of beneficial bacteria for your salt water tank so you will basically have to start from fresh with your with your new salt water tank another question that i'm sure will hit a lot of people getting ready to start into salt water i have all freshwater tanks it's super easy for me to do water changes can i fill my salt water tank up with tap water and just add salt or do I have to have some special type of system or is there a special water I have to use? Do I have to buy salt water? Now when it comes down to water, um, reef tanks are very sensitive. If you're gonna go for corals, um, the, the corals are very sensitive to, to metals, for example, copper. Um, and that um, does have a presence in normal tap water. Um, and also other things like chlorine and all the other stuff that they use to clean um, the drinking water that comes to your home. Now obviously freshwater fish, um, they are susceptible, susceptible to things like this, but you can use products to you know, help uh, counteract all of the um, contaminants in the water, like the chlorine and things like that. You can also do that for salt water, but I wouldn't recommend it. Realistically, what I would suggest is using RODI water um, and 
making sure that water is at zero TDS. TDS means total dissolved solids. So in other words, zero TDS means there's nothing in the water other than water. Um, there's two ways you can do this. You can either go out and get yourself your own RODI unit, connect it up to your uh, mains, connect it up to your tap water in some way, um, and then create your own RODI water. Or you can go to the fish shop, your local fish shop, and you can buy it from them. And you can also buy it from them pre-salted. So you literally don't have to mix the salt or anything. You can go to them, they mix the salt and everything for you. And then all you've got to do is tip it straight into your tank. Me personally, because I've got such a large tank, um, I make the water myself and then I store it in water butts, big water butts that you have outside collecting your rainwater. I store my RODI water in there um, to obviously, so I've always got water on standby ready for use in case um, my water level drops or something happens and I need to do a water change quickly. So, as far as filtration goes, I run a canister filter on this tank. Now, I have sponges and media and filter floss in this tank. Can I leave all that? Do I have to clean it out? Do I have to have special filtration? What do I have to put in my canister filter to make a saltwater tank thrive? Or can I just leave it all? When it comes down to your filtration, the filtration isn't much different to your fresh water. So everything that you've currently got in your canister filter for fresh water will transition over to a salt water tank very easily. Uh, you said about filter floss, I'd probably change your filter floss anyway because filter floss gets dirty very quickly so I probably would put fresh filter floss in there. Um, I definitely would also clean all of your system out, clean all of your filtration, make sure all your sponges are clean, make sure everything is it's sort of like as like new as you can get it. Um, get it all nice and clean so that when it comes into this tank, it's like a fresh start um, and you're good to go. Maybe if you've got ceramic media in there, um, maybe go out and get yourself some, um, do you know, some aquarium rock, like live, we call it live rock, but do you know, like aquarium rock, like Fijian live rock or something like that. But me personally, I wouldn't get it live, I would get it dry or dead. And I'd take a, a hammer and a chisel and I'd smash it up into little pieces and then I'd put that into your basket in your um, filtration that you had your ceramic media in. If you haven't got that as an option, then go out and get the best ceramic media that you can get. One that is very porous, um, which can hold your nitrifying bacteria and a lot of it. Another question I have, fragging or frag, like I've heard about frag tanks, is that kind of like propagating plants? If I do get corals or live rock, do I just snip them up and then I can like replant them and grow them? I am very curious about frags or frag tanks. Now fragging, yes, fragging is a bit like propagating plants. Like there's some plants um, in planted tanks where you can literally, once they get to a certain height, you can cut them in half or you can cut them wherever you desire, cut that bit off, plant it back into the substrate, it'll grow new roots and then it'll turn into its own individual plant. Now with certain corals, you can do that also. Um, some corals, like for example, green star polyp, um, that looks a bit like grass when it's uh, when all these polyps are out. You, you can literally just take a pair of scissors to a green star polyp, cut a bit off, stick it to a frag plug or stick it to um, some rock or wherever you want to put it and then that will then grow um, and become its own individual coral. Same with like mushrooms and things like that. Most corals can be fragged um, and then obviously they will become their own individual coral. A frag tank is basically a tank that you take all of your frags and you just put them in it. It's just a tank that is set up solely for all of your frags, whether you're using it to grow them out, make them bigger and then add them to your display tank once they're at a larger size, or you're using it to display them all for people to come around and buy them from you. 
Um, so that's what a frag, ta frag tank is and fragging is basically um, cutting a coral, cutting a piece off a coral to make it its own individual coral and then you've got two rather than one and so on. Thanks Mike. This is going to help me out extremely well and I will hope it helps everybody else out that is going to start up a saltwater tank. So guys, there was a little video on saltwater, a little, a little beginner's introduction. Now if you've got any questions on saltwater, um, if, if you've considered setting up your own tank but you're a bit scared of doing it because of all of the horror stories um, or anything like that, then in the comment section below just, just let us know what you, what you want to know and um, I'll do my best to answer it. Obviously I'm not um, an expert at fresh water. Uh, sorry, salt water. <laughs> um, I'm not an expert, but I do know quite a bit now. Um, and obviously, uh, what I can answer, I will. Um, and I'll, I'll help you out as best I can.